Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. Two turtle hatchlings team up to rescue their grandparents, who were captured by fishermen and taken to serve as an attraction in the world's largest underwater aquarium. Today we will recap the story of the movie, A Turtle's Tale 2, Sammy's Escape from Paradise, from 2012. Rosie is a leatherback turtle who is excited for the birth of her grandchildren. After helping the hatchlings out of the nest, she wakes up Ray, her mate, to see them swim for the first time. A few feet away, Sammy also helps some hatchlings out of the nest and introduces himself as their grandfather. Shelly, his mate, is already entering the water with the little turtles when a group of gulls attacks the hatchlings and their grandparents need to protect them. Suddenly, two hunters appear and capture the two turtles with a net. Immediately, Ray and Sammy take care to save the little guys and get them out through the holes. However, Ella and Ricky refuse to leave their grandparents and go after them. The pair is then trapped inside a small tank and soon meets a peculiar lobster named Lulu. Just then, the two babies that were trapped in the fishing net fall into the pond. In order to save them, Sammy decides to help the seagull escape, and in exchange, the bird should take Ella and Ricky back to the sea. Grateful to have been saved, the seagull promises never to eat turtle meat again and leaves. Minutes later, he returns with his friends to try to save the hatchlings. The birds attack the boat with nastiness bombs, but decide to flee when Brian is almost eliminated by the fisherman. While swimming to the bottom of the pond, the cubs spot a dead fish and approach it. However, it doesn't take long for them to discover that this monster is still alive. The creature introduces himself as Jimbo, and Sammy asks where they are being taken. Jimbo then reveals that he has been captured before, but managed to return to the sea by playing dead. The fish tells that they are probably being taken to a large aquarium and claims that life there is not so bad, as humans feed them three times a day. The fishermen then arrive at their destination and negotiate with the manager. Meanwhile, the two turtle hide at the bottom of the tank and end up separated from their grandparents, who are sent to serve as an attraction for visitors to the largest underwater aquarium in the world. While being watched, the turtles wonder where the hatchlings are and start to get worried when they realize that they were not sent to that place. In an attempt to reassure the pair, Jimbo says that the little guys have probably been returned to the sea and introduces the turtles to their old friends. While the group is chatting, two eels are observing everything on the sly and soon go to inform their boss about the arrival of other animals. Don is a seahorse who considers himself the leader of that large tank. The creature manages to convince all the animals to support him with the promise that he has a plan to get them out of that place. When Don hears about the arrival of the turtles, he wastes no time and go talking to them. He then introduces the aquarium to the new residents. The seahorse guides them into a narrow tunnel, where dozens of Cyrus are hard at work trying to dig their way out. When they arrive on the other side, Rita approaches and asks Don how the escape plan is going. The animal then states that as soon as there is a breakthrough, she will be the first to know. In this way, Don is able to maintain his popularity and control of the aquarium. Next, Jax approaches and is completely flipped out. The fish claims that he can no longer stand to have so many faces looking at him. However, Don ignores him and claims that this is one of the side effects of being stuck in that place for so long. After selling the animals, the fishermen return to the sea and empty the pond, which causes Ella and Ricky to be dumped into the sea. The pair then swim alone through the ocean and Ella has one of her flippers grabbed by some creature. However, Ricky manages to help her get free. Looking through the crack, the little ones discover that there is a baby octopus inside, and the three soon become friends. Minutes later, they are surprised by a shoal swimming at high speed and must hide in the crevice for protection. After introducing the aquarium to the turtles, Don takes them to see the dolphin tank. The humans take the injured animals there and help them recover. Afterwards, these creatures are returned to the ocean. Just then, the seahorse overhears the conversation of the humans and learns that the dolphin will be released the next day. So he immediately begins to put his plan into action. The hatchlings are still hiding in the crevice when they are visited by a large octopus. The turtles are startled, but Annabelle reveals that this is their mother. The animal asks why the little ones are alone in the ocean and Ella tells her that their grandparents were taken to the big tank. Next, Ricky asks the mollusk for help in finding them. Lulu is also trapped in the tank and approaches a small room surrounded by a glass globe. The creature watches the humans closely and is horrified to witness the brutality with which they devour a plate of lobster. Frightened by what he sees, Lulu runs away, announcing that everyone will be devoured. Sammy and Ray still don't understand how Jimbo was able to escape from that place once, and the fish explains that it was all just pure luck. He realized that from time to time humans would show up to clean the aquarium and decided to play dead in the hope that he would be thrown back into the sea. Instead, however, he was pulled out of the water and ended up dying for real. Some time later, Jimbo was discarded in the garbage dump, and humans threw him into the sea along with the organic waste. 
The fish, then, could only revive when it reached the bottom of the ocean and had its skin pierced by an urchin. When he realized he was free, Jimbo celebrated excitedly, but to his chagrin, his freedom did not last long, as he was soon captured again. Upon hearing this story, Sammy and Ray realize that playing dead is not the best option and ask for Don's help to escape from that place. At this point, the seahorse accompanies them to the boundary between two tanks and says that by entering one of the tubes that cool the penguin wing, the turtles will achieve their freedom. Lulu is nearby and overhears the conversation, so he offers to accompany them on this mission, for he is willing to take any risk to avoid being devoured by humans. While walking over the ice, the trio is followed by penguin chicks, which swarm over them as Lulu tries to reach the tube. Due to their excess weight, the ice begins to crack and they end up falling into the water. Sammy is unharmed and soon reaches the surface, but realizes that his friend was not so lucky. Ray is trapped under countless ice flows and must ask the help of two older penguins to save himself. When they manage to get out of the water, the pair realize that Lulu is still up there and manage to break into one of the tubes. At this moment the guard who is in charge of watching the security cameras hears a loud noise and realizes that there is something wrong with the pipe. The man then goes to the penguin tank, but by this time the turtles are gone. The duo swims to Don's hideout, and Sammy claims that their plans are a real fraud. To prove that he knows exactly what he is doing and to maintain his credibility with the fish in the aquarium, the seahorse devises a plan to free two rays. Don asks the duo to enter the dolphin's mouth and hide there until they are guided out of the tank. Minutes later, the animal appears on the other side of the glass and the rays manage to free themselves along with it. Seeing that Don's plan has been a success, the fish celebrate and have their hope restored, until the little rays are captured and devoured by barracudas. When she sees what has happened, Rita turns pale and faints, but Don says that he has done his part and got the pair out of there. What happens when the animals are out of the aquarium is no longer his problem. After a nice night's rest, Ella wakes up Ricky and is excited to leave, because she can't wait to meet her grandfather again. The little ones wake up the mother octopus and Annabelle. Then the quartet continues their journey, for they still have a long way to go to reach the aquarium. Desperate to get out of that place, Ray asks why they released only the dolphin and Consuelo explains that, time and again, humans take injured animals into the tank and release them after treating them. Suddenly a bell starts to ring and the fish cheer up again, because the noise indicates that they will be fed. The animals are fed at strategic times of the day so that visitors can see them gathered together. They need to be smart, otherwise they run the risk of not being able to feed, because in this competition the fastest fish end up eating first. Sammy and Ray argue over what will be the best strategy for escape when they get some nice news from Jimbo. The fish claims to have found Ricky and Ella and guides the turtles there. After helping the little ones reach their destination, Annabelle and her mother leave. At this point, the pair discovers that it will not be easy at all to save their grandparents. The turtles spot the barracudas approaching and try to warn their grandchildren. However, the hatchlings cannot hear them. When Ricky looks back, he realizes the threat and they both try to escape. They swim through the grating that protects the aquarium's electrical wiring, but are pursued. Ella is about to be devoured and her friend pulls the fish's tail so that he cannot reach her. In an attempt to grab the turtle, the other barracuda bites its colleague's tail and both begin to fight, opening a gap so that the little ones can escape. Ray celebrates, but soon realizes that the predators have not given up on devouring the babies. The fish chase them to the bottom of the ocean and end up losing sight of the babies as they hide among the seaweed. However, after a few minutes of searching, the monsters manage to find them and go after the turtles, who try to hide among the machinery of the tank. The pair enters the pipes for protection, but the barracudas destroy the metal, forcing the cubs into the pipe. Once there, Ella and Ricky are attacked by crustaceans, who decide to leave them alone when the garbage chute opens. At this point, the two friends try to escape, but are surrounded by the fish, which also invade the pipe. So the little turtles have to swim among the leftover food to try to escape, and manage to survive by entering the floodgate, which was about to close. Now the barracudas are trapped inside the pipe with dozens of Cyrus that are ready to destroy them. Sammy is worried about the hatchlings, but when he sees a small octopus and a fish playing in the water, the turtle has an idea to free all the animals that are trapped in the aquarium. While swimming down the pipe, Ella and Ricky hear a distress call and find Annabelle trapped in a hole. After helping their friend free herself, the turtles swim to the edge of the aquarium to find their grandparents again. Sammy and Ray are extremely relieved to see that the babies are okay and try to explain to the pair their plan to get out of there. However, the hatchlings cannot understand the staging and swim to the vent in an attempt to hear what their grandparents have to say. At that moment, the filtration system is activated and Ella ends up being sucked into the pipes. Ricky is trapped in the bars and is saved by Annabelle and her mother. The octopus asks about Ella's whereabouts and Ricky tells him that she has been pulled. 
While in the filtration system, the little one understands her grandfather's plan and swims back outside, where she is reunited with her friends. The little turtle claims to know how to free all the fish in the aquarium, but says she will need help. For her plan to work, it will take a lot of paint, and Annabelle's mother calls in some squids to help with this mission. Sammy and Ray are extremely happy to see that their grandchildren have understood the plan and have gotten reinforcements to help. The turtle then reveals that everyone will be able to leave soon, but Don is annoyed to hear this. The seahorse states that the escape will only happen when he says so, since he is the boss of that tank. The squids then begin to release their ink into the aquarium's filtration system, but Sammy asks them to wait for his signal, because before putting the plan into action, they need to warn all the fish. The pair then split up to break the good news to the rest of the animals and instruct them to pretend they are dead when the tank fills up with paint. That way, the humans will be forced to open the floodgates and release them into the sea. While divulging his plan to all the residents, Sammy is captured by the eels, who take him to Don's presence. The seahorse then states that he will not allow the turtle to carry out his plan, and Sammy tries to escape, but is attacked by Philippe and Marco. Toots, the clown fish, sees the fight and runs for help. Sammy is about to defeat his enemies when the eels decide to use the aquarium wires to trap the turtle. The creatures wrap around Sammy's neck and make it impossible for him to move. Don then orders his henchmen to eliminate the turtle, but Ray manages to get there in time and attacks them to defend his friend. He engages in combat with the creatures, and even though he is outnumbered, he manages to defeat them. As Ray helps Sammy to his feet, Jimbo and other fish show up. Upon seeing what Don has done to the poor turtle, they all rebel against him and Albert devours him. Seeing their boss being eliminated, the eels despair. But the hammerhead shark reveals that he has not swallowed Don, only trapped him in his mouth. After catching his breath, Sammy reveals that the escape plan is about to begin, and this time everyone will be able to escape, even those crazy mores. However, Don will only be released when everyone has left the aquarium. Upon hearing this, the seahorse reveals that he does not intend to leave, and the fish realize that their promises would never come true. The creature was only deceiving those fish with the promise of freedom, which in fact was only a strategy to prevent them from trying to escape. Immediately, Sammy realizes that the reason Don wants to stay in that tank is because out there, on the high seas, he is nothing but a helpless seahorse. The turtle then asks Albert to let him go and begins the plan. Immediately, all the fish follow him, including Philippe and Marco. Sammy gives the signal to the hatchlings and the squids get to work. When the ink invades the aquarium, Jimbo wraps his body in the substance and approaches the glass to scare the humans. During dinner, the VIP customers see the sea creatures sink into the aquarium and leave in awe. The employees rush to see what is happening and are surprised to find the dead fish floating in the pond, which is completely filthy. A diver enters the aquarium to find out what it is and comes to the conclusion that the water has been contaminated by oil. In order to further convince the humans, Jimbo jumps out of the tank and ends up being discarded in the dumpster once again. Both customers and employees pressure the manager to open the floodgates and release the fish before they all end up dying, but the man refuses to do so for fear of being fired. However, he changes his mind and opens the door when a diver threatens him. At that moment, an alert sounds in the security room and the guard realizes that the aquarium is suffering from a squid attack. The man contacts the manager, who rushes over to find out what is going on. When he reaches the room, he finds the guard passed out on the floor and is then attacked by Lulu, who had been hiding in the ventilation for all this time. Meanwhile, an employee finds Jimbo dead on the floor and decides to throw him into the sea, since there was nothing more that could be done for him. Desperate, the manager tries to get rid of the lobster and runs out of the room. At that moment, Lulu jumps into the aquarium and must escape quickly before the floodgates close. The last fish are already leaving the pond, but Consuelo and Manuel decide to stay, because inside they have everything they need and can spend the rest of their lives in each other's company. At that instant, the floodgates begin to close and the turtles hope that everyone has made it out. Sammy and Ray were just leaving when they spot Lulu approaching. Fortunately, the lobster narrowly escapes in time. While waiting for their grandparents, Ella and Ricky spot Jimbo and go to talk to him. They believe the fish is playing dead and try to wake him up, but soon begin to suspect that this time the creature will not get up. Sammy tries to revive his friend, but nothing is able to wake him up. So, as a last attempt, Ray covers the fish with sea urchins, and soon Jimbo comes back to life. After thanking Annabelle and her mother for their help, the turtles return to the island where they were captured and finally reunite with their entire family. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.